Perfect, guys. Audience. So as you guys know, the topic today is for profit centers. Marco, have you kind of given them the rundown there? No, I haven't started. I just basically been uh, saying we're going to get started any minute and I was waiting for you to <laughs> on. So yeah. now, now you're here. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the topic today, guys, obviously is we're going to take a little bit of a turn, right? We're going to go into the, the two different companies that we actually, that Marco owns and operates with our, with our team here. Uh, we're going to talk some on Rada Capital, some on Rada Real Estate. We're going to tie in you know, some for-profit centers of real estate investing. And obviously one of those being cash flow, which promissory notes tie into, right? Promissory notes hit on a cash flow center there. So we'll we'll dive into some of that today. Um I guess for opening up here, a little bit of background for some of you guys. I mean, some of you have been on these webinars, some of you haven't. Um my name is Nate Hall. Hopefully I've spoken to some of you guys who are on right now. I work in Narada Capital Management with Marco. I work on the Narada real estate side of things as well. I'm a real estate investor. I'm a private money lender. Um, you know, I've, I've been with Marco for several years now, and we like to, to jump on these webinars every week and just meet you guys and meet some of our potential new investors. So um, that's a little bit about my background. I could spend a whole five, 10 minutes on it, but I want to give you the overview. Marco, do you want to take 30 seconds here to give the elevator pitch on your background there? Sure. Yeah. Just real quick. I, I got involved in real estate investing at the uh, young age of 18 and I've always loved real estate and, um, you know, just stuck with it from real estate sales to real estate investing, educating myself, buying, fixing, flipping properties, buying and holding uh, kind of the whole gamut. And uh, just over the years, uh, as I was investing in real estate, started Norada Real Estate Investments, which was uh, all, uh, 20, almost 21 years ago. We're closing in on the 21 year anniversary here in January. Um, and that company is just there to help you, real estate investors, uh, invest in real estate as easily as possible. We provide you all the tools and the resources and the training to be able to do that. Uh, we'll figuratively speaking, hold your hand, guide you through and, and invest in turnkey real estate investments all around the country. Well, in the markets that we deem to be uh, favorable for investing. And we do a lot of research on that. So, um, but yeah, I mean, that's just a quick quick, quick uh, summary of what I've been doing and what I've been investing in and what I <laughs> what I work on, but there's other businesses and stuff that are tied to that. And we'll, we'll touch upon that as well today, uh, including Norada Capital, if you're interested in investing in promissory notes, not just real estate. So we'll touch on that as well. Yeah, perfect. And for you guys, you know, that are on this, that listen to our podcast or get our newsletter, you, know, you guys might know Marco mainly as you know the real estate podcast you know investor or you know the guy that you know teaches you turnkey. But Marco is obviously in several endeavors, and you know, and it's a wide range of endeavors. So um, why don't we start here, Marco? We'll give a little bit of a background on Narada Capital Management. We'll talk a little bit about Narada Real Estate. We'll move into kind of the educational topic for today in the for-profit centers, and then we'll we'll tie in Neurotic Capital on the back end as well. So I guess for, if I'm a new investor and I wanna learn about, you know, one of your two major companies, and I say, can you explain a little bit about Neurotic Capital Management? Um, how would you explain Neurotic Capital to like a newer investor? Yeah, so just real quick, if you are a passive investor and you're looking for uh, passive predictable income, then Norada Capital is an investment fund and it may make sense for you because you're investing in a promissory note, which is nothing more than a loan agreement, just like you've seen all, all over, all around the country every day, all the time. And uh, that, that simple investment just allows you to earn a certain percentage of interest each year. And in our case, it's paid monthly. So you get a direct deposit into your bank account every month from your principal investment in that promissory note with uh, Norada Capital. And uh, so for those people who just want very passive, predictable income, no tenants, no toilets, nothing, you know, no moving parts, it makes a lot of sense. And it makes especially a lot of sense if you have a self-directed retirement account of some kind, whether it's an IRA, 401k, a Roth, uh, you name it, um, because it's kind of like one of those set and forget investments. You invest in a note, you choose a term, it could be a three-year note, a four-year note. And then over that period of time for the each and every month for that period of time, you're just getting a direct deposit into your account. So promissory notes with Norada Capital are great if you want a very, very passive income uh, income investment. 
But if you're looking for um, multiple pillars of, you know, growth potential and gains, then real estate is something that you should look at. And, th and they're not mutually exclusive. You can invest in notes, you can invest in real estate, you can invest yeah. in both. Real estate just gives you more pillars or dimensions um, than promissory notes. Promissory notes being very one dimensional, let's call it. Uh, whereas real estate is multi-dimensional. You've got the cash flow, but you also have the equity gains uh, and the leverage. So it becomes a much more interesting, but a little bit more complex uh, type of investment. So, so that, yeah, that, you bring up a good point. Think about. Yeah, that's a good point. It's not either or, right? It's not, I do real estate or I'm become a private money lender and invest in promissory notes. We have, who knows how many clients of ours? I mean, a good a good portion of our our clients at Narada Capital also own real estate with us at Narada Real Estate Investments, right? Right. So if you're an accredited investor and you have the ability to invest in alternative investments like notes, you know you can do both, right? You can mm -hmm. invest in notes, you can invest in real estate. Mm -hmm. So it's that's a it's a really good point in terms of you know doing both if you can. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. So it's a little bit about neuronic capital. Obviously the background there is really more of a passive cash flow play, right? It's a, it's a debt fund, right? We raise private money to grow the companies that neuronic capital management is equity owner and partner in, right? There's nothing more than a simple loan agreement between two parties that mm -hmm. pays a high interest rate. Then we've got neuronic real estate, which is a turnkey brokerage that helps investors buy, you know, several hundred doors a year all across the country, right? Whether it's Tennessee or Florida or Ohio, right? That is designed for you to be the sole owner of an investment property, which has multiple profit centers, which is kind of the educational topic for today, right? Is yeah. when I buy a piece of real estate, what is it actually doing for me, right? Uh, and some of this might be, you know, basic level for you guys, but I think it's really good to review what is my down payment doing for me when I utilize, you know, you know, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac loan and a piece of real estate. So, um, all right, cool. A little bit behind the companies there. Um, let's go into, if we could, Marco, maybe the kind of the meat potatoes of the, the webinar today in terms of profit centers. So. Yeah, I was, um, <clears throat> Uh, a buddy of mine, Alan Stein Jr., uh, wrote a book. He actually published a second book and I uh, forgot the name of the second book, but I was actually looking for it on my bookshelf over there. And I, I, I don't know where it went, but I interviewed him on the podcast, um, I think twice. And the last time was about a year and a half ago. But he uh, he was a one of Michael Jordan's coaches, among other wow. you know high high end professionals. And he always you know, brought up the concept of back to basics. Why were these guys so unbelievably successful in playing basketball and doing the things they did? And it was, it was always about the basics. Every day they just practiced the basics. They didn't get fancy. They didn't try and you know learn advanced moves. They were just always focused on the basics. And so, you know, today's uh, webinar and today's episode is really about that. It's just going back to basics, you know, understanding why real estate is so powerful. It's not that, it, you know, it, it's it's fancy renovations or fancy locations or anything like that. It's really yeah. just, you know, the cash flows and the equity returns that you can get from real estate. So if you just stay focused on those basics, it uh, it, it just becomes incredibly amazing and powerful what is accomplished year after year after year over time. So let's talk about those things, you know, with real estate, you know, there are essentially four pillars for profit centers that you can get from real estate and we'll touch on all of them. And then, you know, we'll, we'll leave some time, a little bit of time for some Q and a, um, but I just did a podcast episode on this exact topic. Just, I think it was last week. So for those of you who don't subscribe to my podcast, you can go to passive real estate investing.com yep. or just search passive real estate investing on on um you know apple podcasts or wherever it may be it'll usually be the first one that comes up it's just a white logo with red and black uh, uh texts and graphics but um you know a lot of people think about real estate as a cash flow generator and it is it it, it can be and it usually is but not always um but over time it definitely becomes a great cash flow generator but cash flow is just one of those first uh, profit centers that real estate provides 
So if you think about, you know, uh, what real that real estate, that income producing real estate is doing, it's essentially this, you're, you're leasing or providing space to a tenant. That tenant is basically paying you each and every month to use that, that space as their living quarters or their home. And uh, that rental income, which is income comes in. And from that, you pay your property taxes, your insurance, your property manager, if you're using one, uh, you, you uh, put some aside for maintenance and repairs. And, um, and that pretty much covers it. Th those are your major expenses. And, and once you deduct that, what you have left over is referred to as net operating income. It's your NOI or net operating income. That is what would go into your pocket if you own that property free and clear. But as real estate investors, we like to use other people's money to purchase it, you know, call it leverage, which is actually the fifth pillar or profit center, if you will, for real estate investing. But when you do that, you'll have a monthly mortgage payment. We call it debt service, technically speaking, but it's a mortgage payment and or a loan payment. And so you pay that from the net operating income. What you have left over is your cash flow. That's your income, net income from the property. That's real spendable cash in dollars. It's not something you have to wait for. It's just there each and every month. Now, I'm not suggesting that you spend it and blow it all the time. Uh, you know, you definitely want to bank it, to reinvest it, or bank some for long-term uh, expenses, what we call capital expenditures. These are the things that typically break down after 10, 20, or 30 years, like your roof for your HVAC system or things that, you know, are big ticket items, but you don't have to worry about on a year by year basis. They just will need replacement at some point in time. It could be 20, 25, 30 years down the road, but you, you want to have a reserve for that and use your cash flow to build that reserve if you don't have it up front. But then as time goes on, that cash flow can be spent. It can be reinvested. You can do whatever you want with it, but that's the first profit center is cash flow. And, uh, and if you have enough real estate, if you build enough, a portfolio big enough, even if it's just one property a year, over time, when you have five, 10 or 15 properties, you'll see that cash flow grow substantially. And it can get to the point where you become financially independent and financially free. And now it's the cash flows from your properties that are paying your living expenses and allows you to be essentially financially independent. So I'm going to stop or pause there, Nate, just to see if there's any comments or even questions that you have um, about that first profit center. Yeah, I have I have a couple of comments. So let's just review real quick, right? So for those of you who are not real estate investors yet that are on this on this call or this webinar, we take our rents, okay, top line item. We deduct what's called PITI, principal interest taxes and insurance add on our fifth fixed cost, which is our property management, right? And what's left over after we deduct that is our cash flow or our ROI, right? And so that's that's that usable cash. Now, I guess my one comment right now is interest rates are higher, right? So when I think we've been kind of spoiled in the last decade with low interest rates and the amount of cash flow that a property can produce. So... I'm a big proponent of other these other profit centers as well, equity accrual, appreciation, things like that. Um, if you're someone who's considering investing in real estate, you know, I know what my answer would be, but I guess your answer as a real estate investor, are high interest rates going to deter you from investing in real estate because this one profit center of cash flow might be lesser at the moment than we're used to, right? Would are you still would you still invest in real estate at the moment? If you're asking me that question, I'd say yes. Uh, yeah, you know, absolutely. When when an investor asks the question, is now a good time to invest in real estate? My answer to them is yes, it's always a good time to invest in real estate. And the reason for that is it's not so much about when, it's about where. Yeah. There are always opportunities around the country. There are always places to invest, deals to be had there's never a point in time, ever a point in time where you can't invest in real estate and find um, properties that make sense uh, from, for, from day one, like the day you buy it. So, so there's never an excuse not to invest in real estate, regardless of what the interest rate is. You know, let's not forget that there was a time in the early 80s when interest rates were like 17, 18, 19%, like mortgage yep. rates. So people and people were still buying real estate. Now, granted, you know, sales would slow down, of course. 
And then ultimately people will start coming out of the woodwork because they need housing and they'll buy something, something they can't afford at that higher rate. So it doesn't stop. It just changes your approach, changes the location uh, or the size of the property you purchase, or, you know, it, it changes other factors, but, but it doesn't stop. Uh, it doesn't stop your real estate investing. It doesn't stop the equity train. You, you know, people still need housing. People will still buy, people still live and rent in places and inflation is always there. Property values still go up over time. You, you know, don't let interest rates or mortgage rates uh, uh, you know, stop you or deter you. It's just a different approach. And, and this is the conversation you can have with one of our investment counselors here, if it's something you're interested in, um, you know, whether you're a seasoned real estate investor or just getting started, it doesn't matter. Talk to my team, talk to an investment counselor and, you know, we can work a plan out for you and show you the numbers. And, and actually I'll, you know, I'll, in, a, in a few minutes here, I'll, I'll talk about some numbers just to give you kind of some perspective as to the rates of return that real estate can generate, even within 8% interest rates or mortgage rates that we have today. So, yeah. so yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't, it shouldn't stop you from investing in real estate. Yeah. And I 100% agree with that. And I think it's important for people to hear that as someone, you know, who is on your level of broker broker ownership and the amount of real estate that you own, you need to still continue to invest. Now, what I think is important here as well is Neurotic Capital Management, the other company that we're going to talk about here in a little bit, has done very well in terms of that profit center, right? So if you're used to that 8, 10, 12 double digit return in the real estate world, that cash on cash return, that ROI, that's diminished at the moment because of high interest rates. Neurotic Capital Management has come in for a lot of our clients and kind of filled that void. For our clients who like cash flow, who are looking for an income stream, they're not looking for a long-term play here in terms of appreciation and equity play. Neurotic Capital Management is a great benefit to our cash flow investors, right? That one profit center, that line item of, of income, Neurotic Capital Management fills that void, right? It, it fits that bill. So we have a lot of investors that are considering both options, real estate or notes. And notes are a great option for those investors who are looking for cash flow back into their pockets at the moment. So, mm -hmm. um, okay. So we've talked about cash flow, profit center number two, Marco, if you'd like to go into that, what's your, what's your second big profit center there? So the, the second profit center is what I just referred to as amortization, mm -hmm. which is just equity gain gain equity gained from the pay down of the mortgage loan. Yeah. So if you bought a property with 20% down and you financed the 80%, well, guess what? You are paying down that mortgage each and every month. So the principal that goes towards that mortgage is creating more equity and less debt on the property. And that increases each and every month and each and every year, because the way a mortgage works is in the beginning, you're paying mostly interest and a little bit of principal, but as each payment goes by, you're paying more principal and less interest to, to the point where the last payment on, let's just say, you know, the last month of year 30 is almost all principal and almost no interest. It's just kind of like a, an, a, an inverted curve. Yeah. Um, but the beautiful thing about that is, is twofold. One is you're not paying it technically. It's your tenant that's paying it. So every month that payment, that, that, that tenant is making a, a rent payment uh, to you. And out of that rent payment, you're paying off or paying down that mortgage. And so each and every month you have a little bit more equity. Now, when you think about that equity gain each and every month and each and every year, as it relates to your original down payment, you know, that 20% down payment, you can do a simple math calculation, divide that equity gain by the down payment and you get a percentage. It's a rate of return. Um, and I, I'm going to go into these numbers here momentarily um, because I want to just give you um, all the numbers in my example all at one time. So you can kind of compare each of these profit centers. So, you know, just stay tuned for that. It's coming. Uh, you'll find it pretty exciting. Um, but yeah, so the amortization of the loan is what I'll refer to as as the second profit center because it is it is a gain. It is truly a gain in the form of equity. So it's not immediately it's not it, it, um, immediately spendable. It's not in the form of cash. It's in the form of equity. But that equity equity can be tapped into if you sold the property or refinanced or did a home equity line of credit or 
put a second mortgage on the property, you can pull that equity out and that now it's real spendable cash. So it's, it's there. It is a form of return. We, we technically refer to it in accounting terms as unrealized gains. You got your realized gains, which are your cash flows, but your unrealized gains are still gains. They're just not realized, meaning they haven't been put into your pocket or your checkbook or your checking account. So, so that's profit center too. Love it. And a lot, a lot of people, we do have investors that cash flow is not as important. They might want a higher price point asset. They might want a new build where it's, it is more of an equity gain appreciation type play. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so the third profit center is, is actually related to that. And it's another form of equity. It's called appreciation. And this is what a lot of people hear or talk about when it comes to real estate is just how much they've made or gained in appreciation um, but it's, and then this is especially true over the last three, four years, you know, since the beginning of COVID, how much appreciation we've seen pretty much everywhere across the country, um, certainly above average in some places, well above historical averages or historical norms, but appreciation is just the increase in the market value of that property for whatever reason, it could be because of replacement costs, which are just in a form of inflation. It could be because of supply and demand. There's just strong demand and not enough supply and it's pushing prices up. However, whatever the cause is, it's still appreciation. That property you bought for 200,000, you know, two years later is worth, let's say 220, $230,000. Well, those gains at $30,000 of uh, uh, increased value is a, is a form of gain. It's appreciation. It's still unrealized, but it's still something that you can measure and it's there. And again, you can take that appreciation, whatever that amount is, and divide it into your down payment, and you can come up with a percentage, and that's your return on um, your return on your investment in the form of appreciation or equity, equity gains. So that's where it starts to get really exciting with real estate, is because historically speaking, and over time, you should see five to seven percent on average over time. Sometimes it's lower, sometimes yeah. it's much higher. It really is market specific and even neighborhood or area specific as to how much appreciation you see. But, you know, all else being equal over time, you will see uh, just naturally four, five, six, seven percent average annual rates of appreciation. That's just what's been happening. Now, of course, I'm talking all, all the numbers we're talking about today are not adjusted for inflation. Like we're not we're talking about nominal gains. We're not talking about inflation adjusted gains, but it, but it's still there. The, but at the end of the day, when you add this all up, you're well ahead. Um, uh, you're ahead of the 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 rate of inflation. You know whatever the government's telling you is is inflation. So th this is why real estate is such a powerful inflation hedge, and a natural hedge against inflation. That's yeah. why people love it. Yeah. Let's let's pause there for a second because I think it's important to reiterate the last three points we've talked about. So let's say we spend you know, $30,000 in a down payment, okay? And we have a 6%, 8% ROI. So cash on cash return, profit number one. Let's say the equity accrual, right? We just talked about the amortization piece. Let's say that adds another, you know, 3% to our bottom line. So we've had an 8% cash on cash return. Your, your accountant does, you know, you look at the equity accrual at the end of the year and it adds 3% to your bottom line. I think you're going to go through numbers here in a second, but yeah. now we're at 11%. Right. And let's say the appreciation, like Marco said, it's going to low end. Let's say it's 5%, right? So just right there on those three profit centers, our IRR, our internal rate of return is 16%, right? So when you're trying to do, when people, it's it's interesting when people come to a conversation and say, well, you know, when the market's up, I'm making 15% in the stock market, but your property, this property is only making me eight or 9%. Well, you have to compare it. Apples to apples, right? If you're just comparing cash flow to, you know, div dividend in the stock market or what your stock portfolio is doing, you still want to factor in these other profit centers in, in real estate, right? So when you actually take the IRR of a rental property versus what some other, you know, uh, investment re return is, uh, they it's fairly comparable, right? When things are high in the market, you know, versus a piece of real estate, um, just those three profit centers right there, we're, we're well into the double digit returns, right? So, um, fourth profit center, Marco, if you want to go into that. Well, the fourth, the fourth is, uh, is essentially deep depreciation. And, you know, you, you might think about that as not really being a form of 
of profit, but it, it, it is because the depreciation on a property essentially lowers the tax impact um, um, on your on your cash flow. So that means you're putting more in your pocket. You're paying less in taxes because you get to write off uh, uh, a fraction of the property each and every year. So the base, the way it works with residential real estate is the IRS allows you to write off uh, a, a part of the improvements, which is basically everything but the dirt that the property sits on. So everything that's above it, the sticks, bricks, copper, and concrete, all that stuff is all depreciable. And uh, over the course of 27.5 years, it's a weird number. I don't know how the IRS came up with this number, but over 27 and a half years, you can take everything that's referred to as improvements and depreciate it, which means that each and every year you take, you know, one 27.5, if that's a real word, of the value of the improvements, meaning not the dirt, and and use that as a, um, a as a depreciation factor on your income tax on your taxes to lower uh, the tax impact of the cash flow. And all that means is this: is that if you are um, if you make let's say twenty four hundred dollars um, on that property in positive cash flow. Uh, rather than paying taxes on the, the 2400 you can deduct the depreciation amount for that year from that 2400 and then you only pay taxes on what's left over. So theoretically speaking, let's just say as an example, um, th your depreciation in year one is $2,400. Well, the $2,400 minus the 2400 in income or cash flow minus the 2400 in depreciation leaves you zero. So you're paying taxes on zero, but you're still pocketing $2,400. So it, it can lower uh, dramatically uh, the amount of taxes you pay on that cash flow or even eliminate it altogether. And in some cases, if you have enough real estate and enough depreciation, and sometimes you can get creative and you can accelerate depreciation, you can actually have more in depreciation than you actually have in cash flow. Now you're carrying forward the depreciation from the property for future years cash flows. So you could be paying little to no tax on the cash flow from your properties each and every year for for a long period of time like for potentially 27 and a half years yeah. so this is a beautiful thing now so so the reason i call it a profit center or a pillar of, of income whatever you want to call it for real estate is is that it's a phantom expense and it goes directly to the bottom line it goes directly down to uh you know, the, the, it directly impacts the cash flow from that property. It, it, it improves it because you're not paying taxes on it. So it's basically income in the form of tax savings is what depreciation gives you. Yep. And remember, that's one profit center, right? Excuse me, that's one taxable benefit. Like if you mm -hmm. guys go and you Google or chat GPT, you know, tax benefits of rental real estate, depreciation is probably the top one, but there are other depreciable items of rental properties. So this is why when people say, I want to acquire real estate for tax benefits, is what they mean, right? And, and the tax benefit to me, that that is a realized gain to your to your pocket, right? There's basically, to me, two realized gains and two unrealized gains, right? Equity accrual and appreciation are unrealized, cash flow and tax benefits are realized. Those are going to directly affect your pocketbook, right? Your your pocket. Yeah. So uh Great, great explanation there for sure, Marco. That's that's yeah. one of the more exciting pieces. And then if you get into like cost segregation and things like that with more expensive real estate, there's a lot of creative things, right? Yeah. And this comes with a caveat. We're obviously not CPAs or attorneys, so you guys can talk to your CPAs about this. Um, but I think that's a, a good spot. And if you have if you don't have anything left on that market, it's a good spot to kind of circle back to cash flow and back in raw capital management is is there anything else you wanted to hit on that well i was just going to give a quick a quick example like a, beautiful it's, let's do actually, it yeah, yeah. It's, it's actually a real example so so i'm going to throw not a lot of numbers out at you uh, but numbers okay. nonetheless and if you could just follow me conceptually here you can see uh, why real estate is so powerful and how it can be so exciting so i'm going to take what's an essentially a real example. It's not a real property, but a real example in terms of the numbers. So let's just say that you are investing in a $200,000 property. That's the purchase price. And you're going to do the common 20% down, which is $40,000. So now you're buying a $200,000 piece of real estate for $40,000 as a down payment. 
and you're borrowing the other 160,000, that's your, uh, you know, that's your um, OPM, other people's money. It's basically your mortgage loan. And I'm going to be pretty conservative with this, given the fact that interest rates are at 8% right now. Um, you know, it's it's uh, on the high end, and we will see those rates come down over the, you know, the coming few years here, two, three years. But let's just say conservatively, this property is now kicking off a net cash flow of $200 a month. It could be 250, it could be 300, it could be 400, but I'm just taking a conservative number here. Let's just call it 200 bucks a month net cash flow. Okay, that's the bottom line after all expenses. And the assumptions we're making, um, if if I kind of go down the, the the weeds here, down the rabbit hole, is that this property will appreciate on average 5% per year, and it has uh, rent inflation of 4% per year. We're probably not going to get into that, so don't worry too much about that. It's just the, the, the basic numbers that I want you to focus on. So what happens in year one with this property, this $200,000 new investment property that you just purchased? Well, at $200 a month times 12 months, you have uh, $2,400 uh, in cash flow that first year. This is before depreciation, by the way. Okay. So this is assuming that you have no tax benefit at the moment, but you do because you could pay essentially zero in tax. Um, so that 2,400, if you divide that into your down payment of 40,000, gives you a 6% rate of return. That's 6% just on the cash flow as a rate of return. So that's your first pillar or your first profit center. Now we talked about amortization. You've got this mortgage loan that your tenant is paying off for you. Well, in the year, in the first year of your mortgage, which is the worst year of principal pay down because it gets better each and every year and each and every month. You're only paying down $1,337 of, of that equity or of that, that principal, which is in the form of equity, which means now you, at the end of the first year, you have an extra $1,337 of equity in that property. Same math. You take that $1,337 divided into your down payment of $40,000, and that gives you a 3.3% rate of return. Not a lot, but it's something, right? It, it, gives, it gives you something. The third profit center is the appreciation. And we made the assumption that our appreciation is on average 5%. So 5% of a $200,000 property is $10,000. So now at the, at the end of the first year, that $200,000 property is worth $210,000. You've made 10,000 in unrealized gains called appreciation. Well, guess what? This is simple math. 10,000 divided into 40,000 is 25%. It's a quarter of that 40,000. So you just made 25% uh, in in appreciation based on your down payment. So let's add this up. 6% in cash flow, 3.3% from amortization, 25% uh, from uh, the amortization. In your first year, which is your worst year, in your first year, you've just made 34.3% total return on investment, 34%. And that's before your depreciation kicks in on saving you the taxes on that cash flow. That's pretty powerful. Yep. Yep. That's absolutely. Why real, that's why real estate is just wonderful. It's 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 an amazing investment. So if that doesn't get you excited, I don't know what does, because <laughs> you know that that that's that's pretty amazing to be able to to generate rates of returns like that. You know, from real estate. That's why real estate is so powerful as wealth preserver but a wealth generator as well it's a it's a get rich slow investment class it works it works almost all the time the only way it, it the only way it doesn't work is if you kind of screw it up uh you know if, if you make a decision to buy in like a war zone or like a like a terrible neighborhood that's on the decline that kind of stuff but if you buy good quality property in good neighborhoods you have good property management so you have good tenants and you maintain that property over time, you just don't let it get run down or dilapidated. Guess what? It's going to treat you real well in the years to come. 100%. 100%. And I think that's, we haven't even gone into the the rest of the math there, but that's, you know, we've gone to the first three profit centers. And to me, that's why, let's say you ever only buy one piece of real estate. Let's say you're just a minimal real estate investor. Let's say you buy one property for $200,000 and you hold it for, 20 years, right? Probably not going to be too disappointed even in that one property. That that one property will probably send your kid to college. So, uh, you know, pretty impressive. 
Well, let, let's take that exact same property and those exact same conditions and terms and everything we just talked about. And let, let's fast forward 20 years. You only bought one property and you held that property for 20 years. So in 20 years, based on those same numbers, assumptions, nothing changing, not refinancing the mortgage to a lower interest rate, nothing changes. Okay. So we're just letting it ride. <laughs> um, your cash flow at a 4% increase per year on average uh, becomes uh, $5,056 a month, which is now, you know, again, not inflation adjusted, but you're making a 12.6% return on your original $40,000 investment. That's 12.6% yeah. 12, 12 return on, uh, on that cash, that down payment. Your equity gain at this point in time in year 20 is $6,080. Okay. $6,080. That's a 15.2% um, return on that original yeah. 40,000. Again, not inflation adjusted here. Your appreciation at this point has gotten, uh, just compounding it has gotten to, in year 20, you'll have a $25,000 appreciation, rate of appreciation, because that property is appreciated a little at a time, little at a time each and every year. But after 20 years, it's now a $530,000 property, right? So, so you've, at this point, you've gained $330,000 of equity, just assuming an average of 5% per year. Yeah. So at this point, you've, you've, you've gained um, 91%, a 91% return over that 20 years on the original $40,000 down payment, which means that your running gain, your running total is $465,000 on one property. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Yeah. I love it. That's, that's the power right there. Yeah. One property, right? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So do that times two times three times four. It doesn't take long to become a multimillionaire. Right. Right. It's just time. Well times well on said. your side. Yeah. Yeah. Well said, sir. There you have it. Um, Just checking in on time there, Marco. Yeah. So we got, some, got, some, got a few minutes left here. Yep. Yeah. Um, we can take some questions if anybody has questions about, you know, real estate or, or investing in promissory notes, whatever it may be. I mean, we've got, we've got time to the top of the hour. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, it's pretty exciting what you can do with, with real estate. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Well, let's, uh, let's take a few minutes here, circle back to the second company. We'll circle back to Toronto Capital Management. Um, and just talk about profit center number one in terms of cash flow. Um, so in terms of Neurotic Capital, Marco, do we want to give a, a refresher and overview on the company and kind of what assets are held within Neurotic Capital so people understand that foundation there? Yeah, here's a 60 second, um, here's just a 60, 60 second overview of Neurotic Capital. Neurotic Capital is an investment fund. Uh, it, it offers investors uh, promissory notes as investments. Uh, we would pay 12% or 15% per year paid monthly from that investment. So you get a direct deposit into your bank account each and every month, whether it's your personal account, a business account, or even a self-directed retirement account. It doesn't matter. You just every month you get a direct deposit. And uh, the rate, the rates of return are simple. It's either 12% or 15%, just depending on, on the amount you've invested. Um and you get to choose the term of that note. It's either a three, you can do as little as two years, but two, three, four, five, six, seven year note terms you choose, it's, you know, your choice. Uh, we can do longer as well. Some investors have asked for longer terms like eight, um, eight, nine, and 10, and that's fine. But, you know, it's not on our website. We just, it's by request only. And um, and it's pretty pretty simple. There's nothing to really manage. There's no moving parts. Once the promissory note has been uh, signed and funded, uh, it just goes on autopilot every month you get a direct deposit. So that's the investor side of it. Internally, uh, the fund is essentially a private equity firm. We invest in five categories of assets. Those are e-commerce based businesses that we have equity ownership in. They are uh, what I call masterminds or educational masterminds, which are very lucrative businesses. And uh, we have a big, big, you know, movement going on there. Thirdly are um, what I'll call Broadway productions, Broadway musicals. We've got a number of productions. I believe we're at nine right now in terms of Broadway musicals, uh, including you know one with Neil Diamond called The Beautiful Noise and one with Barry Manilow called Harmony, which opens up next month. Um, the fourth category 
is much, much smaller, but it's a real estate focused um, uh, category or section. It's something that we're working on right now to, to grow uh, specialized type of real estate, like short-term rentals um, and whatnot. We're working on a project that's uh, confidential at the moment, but it'll be uh, makes world news, a little teaser there, but <laughs> prob probably can't talk about it for a few months. And uh, the fifth category is a very small category at this moment. It's just some crypto assets. So those are the five categories. So it provides diversification. That's the, the point I think that I want to make with that is that your node is not attached to one specific asset or business. You get the benefit from uh, all the businesses and assets, all the ventures within uh, Norada Capital as a, as a fund, an investment fund or a private that's equity right. firm. So that's it. It's, but it's pretty simple. It's, 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 it's complex in how it's structured internally, but it's very simple as an investment because it's just a promissory note. Yeah. And a promissory note for those of you who are on the call who have never invested in notes, it's really nothing more than a loan agreement, right? That's right. Between two parties. So there's a loan agreement between you as the investor and Narada Capital Management as the borrower. It's nothing more than that. It's just a loan agreement between two parties and we're we're paying you or Marco Narada Capital Management is paying you an interest rate to borrow that capital for said amount of time. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it's three, four, five, six, seven years. Okay. So um, there's couple tiers, right? There's a 12% ROI that's paid anything under, you know, any investor that puts in any 50 to hundred K we pay out 12% annually. Anything over a hundred thousand dollars is a 15% annualized return. Okay. And there is a, there's a bonus tier. You know, if you put in 200 K or more, there's a 5% bonus that we pay out uh, based on, you know, it's not paid out, you know, at the actual time of the investment It's paid out on the, at the term of the loan, right? So the, the end of the loan. So, yep, yep, that's correct. Um, what else did we talk about with that? <laughs> well, we had one question come in. We just want to make sure um, Raj asked the question there. Um, the secret non disclosed project that you mentioned to you do we have a shot to invest in that real estate and be part of it? Good question, Raj. <laughs> um, yeah, actually, um, uh, Interesting question. And I will say that that is actually a possibility at this point in time, because I, I know that the way this 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 project will unfold is there is going to be an initial seed round, which Norada Capital is 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 maybe I shouldn't say is maybe part of. Um, and. Um, uh, then after that is done, it'll probably open up to uh, to investors in general, like accredited investors. Um, yeah, so I'm actually, I, I, I actually, all I can show you is this, <laughs> a, little, a little teaser poster. <laughs> actually it's, it's an, it's entire, it's a confidential investment packet summary. Uh, it's not just a poster. It's a whole packet of paper. There you go. Um, my partner is actually an, uh, an architect and, uh, the, and this, along with the design firm, have done all the renderings and floor layout and plans and for it, uh, like everything for it. So it's pretty cool. But yeah, Raj, um, just stay in touch with me over the next few months. And um, and I, I believe there will be an opportunity. Maybe maybe circle back with me in, in about a month and I'll let you know the status of it. Yeah. And I think that kind of ties into a lot of people asking what backs my investment, right? What What's my note backed by? Well, it's backed by projects and assets and endeavors like that, that Neurotic Capital Management takes on, right? Yep. So, um, you know, there's, as Marco mentioned before, there's multiple categories. There's mastermind businesses, there's e-commerce businesses, there's, um, you know, uh, broad musical productions, which is, you know, a, a nice eclectic mix there. Thanks, Jeff. We appreciate you. Uh, we appreciate the the feedback there and the great presentation. Uh, let's see. Any OZ is, fun experience? Is is, is 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 Jeff or Jeffrey there? Is that a question or a statement? Any OZ fun experience needed in Dayton, Ohio? I'm yeah, not sure. I'm not sure. What, what do you mean? If you want to expand on that, Jeff, we're not sure what that means in terms of OZ, any OZ fun experience. So. Well, uh, we'll, wait, we'll wait for that to come in. For sure. <laughs> Guys, are there any, any other questions on neurotic capital management, the note investment, profit centers, anything we can support you with? Because if not, we can certainly wrap up. 
Um, it's up to you guys. Anybody yeah. Have anything it, else? As far as a wrap up, you know, like just contact, contact our team. Um, we have investment counselors with Norada Capital and Norada Real Estate. So you can go to either website, noradacapital.com. And I think you all know how to spell Norada at this point in time, N-O-R-A-D-A, Norada Real Estate or Norada capital.com and then you can just fill up the quick form there just name email and phone and um and then uh one of our team members will reach out to you and just have a conversation about whatever you want to talk about whether it's the notes or the real estate so pretty simple yep. yeah yes exactly right guys super simple you can reach out to us either way there's usually a, there's usually ways to actually book a call through the sites as well right so neuronacapital.com or neuronarealestate.com reach out to us we can certainly jump on, you know, a call and answer questions for you moving forward. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. Cool. I th think, um, oh, there, there's, uh, Jeffrey again, uh, oh, it's fun. Uh, opportunity zone. Gotcha. Oh, um, well, I'm not sure what the question is, but I will say this, that, uh, I've looked at opportunity zones in years past. I, didn't really do much with them. They're interesting, um, especially from a tax a tax perspective um, to minimize taxes. But we don't have anything in an opportunity right. zone right now on either side. No matter whether it's Norada Capital or Norada Real Estate, we we're not doing anything with opportunity zones. They exist. I'm not even sure where they are anymore. I know at one time they were down in um, you know hurricane if affected areas um like new orleans and whatnot but um but yeah they, they they come and go it just depends on whether there's a need for um uh, a need to incentivize uh redevelopment or construction so yeah. yep good question jeff thank you for the the question there yeah any others guys i think we're good i think we're good 50 minutes not bad yeah not bad all right well this will be all right guys yeah good. Well, Marco, thank you. As always, appreciate you jumping on, taking the time you too. to meet potential investors. And we'll uh, we'll see you again next week, guys. Okay? Take care. Thank you for joining us. Thanks. Take care. Bye-bye. Right. Bye-bye.